Hi, I'm Jamie and welcome to Glowing Beauty Addiction. Welcome back if you're one of my subscribers and a great big hello if you're one of my new subscribers. Today's video is a special request video for one of my viewers and friends, Frog Push. She wanted to see an Alamar eye tutorial. So Alamar is the palette that we got in BoxyCharm this, well, I guess, yeah, this month, June. And I created a look using this, and now I'm going to try to recreate it. We'll see if I can actually make that happen. So I've already done the majority of the rest of my face. I started off, as usual, with my Makeup Forever Step 1. I leave my empty in here just for these purposes. I went in with the Age Rewind Eraser Makeup in Creamy Neutral. I have really been loving this. It's not a necessarily full coverage foundation, but on these days that I'm just kind of doing housework or running errands, works great for me. I used the Instant Age Rewind Eraser Dark Circle in Light for concealer. I set all of that with Laura Mercier powder. I have fallen back in love with this powder a bit. Maybe just because I'm out of my flower beauty, but we shall see. I did my brows with the Brow Bar to Brow Bar to Go by Gerard Cosmetics in medium to ebony. This has be the I've got two of these and these have become my holy grail for brows. I absolutely love these. I contoured, no I didn't, yes, it's been a day. I think I contoured with my Wet n Wild and then I bronzed with the Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer. This is just the Muramuru Muramuru Butter Bronzer in Bronzer. I've picked up a few different shades and colors of this when they were on sale. I highlighted using Physician Formula Butter Highlighter in Champagne. These are becoming my absolute favorite highlighters. The glow you get without there being chunks of anything are they're just amazing. I blushed using the Butter Blush from Physicians Formula in Vintage Rose. I used Jeffree Star's L The Lure Liquid Lipstick in Chrysanthemum today. And I primed my eyes with a MAC Paint Pot in Painterly. So that's what I have done so far. So now, my holy grail, always gotta have one of these. I am going to try to re recreate the look that I did in my BoxyCharm and my Ipsy videos. Now this palette didn't have a good base shade for me. So what I did, I am going in with my Kevin Aquan brush and I'm gonna use this in Glock color right here. I wonder. It is in shade, too small for these OABIs to read, 328. 328, it was one of their matte eyeshadows. I have actually repurchased this color a couple times. I love it so much. Gosh, how come every time I say that I think of Rich Lux? Love it so much. So I'm just going in with a base just to set any of my uh, eye primers and whatnot. I always find everything kind of blends a little better when you have that base of powder underneath. I uh, Sometimes I'll even just use my loose powder, my setting powder, and that works fine as well. So, did that. So now, I get to try to remember what I did. I, I did use absolutely every color in this palette. So I'm gonna try to remember in what order and how I did that. So 
first I am going to go in with my Wayne Goss 16 brush and I am going to go into Coco Taxi, this orange shade here. And I'm just going to buff that into the crease. The pigmentation and of this palette is so unreal. Um, I'm just amazed. I've been talking about it nonstop, but I honestly, I'm, I'm hard pressed to think of another palette that I have that has this kind of payoff and blendability. And I can't recall the price right now off the top of my head for this palette, but it was beyond reasonable. So I've just deepened my crease with that color. <clears throat> now I know I kind of do all, all of my steps. Like you watch some beauty gurus and it's like, oh my God, you have to do all your crease work first and then work to the lid. And you know, I go with what works for me. You know, I touch up things as I go and it is what it is. Now what's very cool about this palette is there are little drops by some of the colors and those are the ones that they suggest using wet. And then the sun is the one that you would use dry. I'm sure there's no rule. I don't, I don't think. And plus with makeup, I believe, firmly believe that rules are meant to be broken. So now that we kind of have that base in the crease, I am going to go in with my Moda Pro brush and I'm going to go into Tropico just to deepen it up a little bit more. Like there's like a little bit of fallout, but there is nothing to write home about. Like look at this payoff. And I'm really hoping I can recreate this as well as I did for the video. So I'm not going to bring that all the way into my the inner corner of my eye, but I will bring it most of the way. Now I don't I don't necessarily try to avoid my eyelid just because I know I'm going to be working there later. And I do find when you're going in with darker colors, if I kind of start more on the eyelid at the corner, it's easier to buff out. So you're not gonna end up with that really defined line. Now, if you want that really defined line, you can always go in and cut your crease with concealer. So either or. Now I am going to get a, a different crease brush and I'm going to use my Sigma Small Tapered Blending E45 brush. Focus. And I'm going to go into Guantanamera. How badly did I butcher that? And again, just going to go into the crease just to create some of that definition just to deepen it. Now I have very hooded eyes or deep set. I'm never sure about the uh, terminology. And I'm going to take this as far as I took the last color, but just not as high up because I want depth to my crease. And because I'll be putting lashes on, I will be doing my crease work a little more dramatic than I would on a day-to-day -day basis. Although I have been finding some colors and shadows that I've been liking, so I have been going quite a bit more dramatic. So I'm sure people who see me out mowing my lawn in a full face of glam aren't quite sure what to think. So now that we have the creases deepened a bit and they're looking somewhat even, it's always the trouble making both eyes look the same. I am going to take some MAC Fix Plus and my Marc Jacobs The Shadow brush. So it's just a flat standard eyeshadow brush and I'm going to wet that brush 
and I am going to go into Veradero and this is the the blue shade and I am going to very carefully work that in to my outer corner like do you see this like I've said before my Natasha Denona palettes don't perform this good as easily. You can definitely make them work this good, don't get me wrong, but um, as far as work-wise, these are so much nicer and so much easier. And I'm just putting this kind of on my outer half of my eyelid. it into the corner here just to give that effect so now I am going to go in with a Sigma E43 domed blending brush I'll give it a squirt I used to use the Mac for my setting spray but now I highly recommend the Gerard Cosmetics Slay All Day. I've completely switched. Now I only use my MAC Fix Plus for this purpose. So I'm gonna go into Selena, which is this green. And I'm just gonna kind of buff that into the center a bit to blend those colors together. Going right up to my crease. not going all the way into the inner corner of my eye. I'm just noticing I have lash glue left on my eyelids. So it'll give that peacocky kind of a look. So then I am going to take my Chikahodo GSN08 brush and it is a pointed uh, shadow brush and I'm going to go into La Costa and lay that down. I love these pointed brushes for any inner corner work because you can get right down to the um, tear duct. Blend and buff them together a bit so there's not a super harsh defined line there. So that, that always I find brightens, like I've tried the halo look but I find with my eye shape and how deeply set my eyes are, when I try to do dark on the inner and outer, it closes my eyes up for some reason. So now I am going to go in with a Sigma Duo Fiber Blend Brush in E41. And I'm gonna go into this gold L Mal L Mal. Lord, you can tell that I am Canadian and I don't learn any Spanish. I'm going to just a little bit, again, kind of define this line, almost glaze over everything. I'm normally not a huge dual fiber brush fan but I find for things like this where you're just kind of glazing over other colors it's kind of nice because they pick up color but not a big huge amount so now I am going to go in with another Sigma small tapered blending E45 if you watched my Sigma brush video you'll know I have a, a few of these I'm gonna go into this cafecito. And this is where I'm going to just touch up this 
crease a bit. Deepen it even further. I'm not intending to put much shadow towards the inner corner. I'm just blending that out. There's that. And now I am going to take, I'll use this, a Sigma short shader brush. I'm gonna wet it. And I'm going to go in with the Celia, the green. And just kinda put some of that on my lower lash line. So, and I will take a clean duo fiber Sigma E41 and into this Lacosta, even though it says it's wet, I, this is a dry brush and just kind of bring it into the inner corner. Even dry, these have such nice payoff. So that's essentially the shadow that I did using this palette. My next step to recreate the whole look <clears throat> was I went in with the Jante Blue dark brown eyeliner that we got in the Boxy Charm. Um, not really a fan of it. Like it, it swatches so nice on your hand, right? Like it's like, ooh, super smooth. And then you try to apply on top of a eyeshadow. Oh, helpful tip. If you don't want to get wrinkles and stuff, don't pull your eye like this. Um, and I just find it's not, I don't know. Well, you can tell. Like, I guess you can tell I have eyeliner on one eye, but it's definitely not the uh, payoff I like to get. I have better eyeliner, so I think this will reside in the bad bin. So then I went in with, first off, lash curler. That I actually remembered to bring into my filming room today. I have been absolutely loving this Butter London Double Decker Lashes Mascara. And I think in the unboxing, I was like, because eh, the wand looked huge and whatnot. I have been loving it. I find it uh, actually helps my lashes stay up on their own, which is very nice. It is much better. Uh, for bottom lashes with this particular mascara to use a lash fan mascara brush but I don't have that with me so then I went in with the Baddington lashes that we got in BoxyCharm now I really liked these um, my only complaint was that they felt the lash band on them is quite thick compared to a lot that I um, I've been wearing lately and I know they will loosen up with time, but man, when you find that lash that you like, it uh, it's hard to find anything else that will compare. So I'm just using some Duo Eyelash Glue. And I've already trimmed these, because I, uh, ugh, I really 
hate the glue that's in the squeezy bottle. I've already trimmed these because they I've worn them before. So if you want a video on how to trim your lashes and know how to trim them, where to trim them, just let me know and I can certainly do that. Always make sure that after you put your lash glue on that you let it kind of sit for a good amount of time before you put them on. Otherwise, they're just going to move around, which, you know, when I was first starting was kind of helpful because I'd get them, you know, up under my eyebrow and you need to kind of scoot them around. But if you let it dry a little bit, then it's kind of going to stay where you want it to stay. Hopefully. How convenient, my camera died just as I was putting on my lash and it was like one of the very few times I got my lash on first attempt and no video proof. So we'll see if I can do it again. There we go. So this was the look using my BoxyCharm items and the eye look. So if you like these type of videos or tutorials, please give me a like down below and let me know uh, any recommendations at all really. Um, and I hope you subscribe if you're not already. And I, I had fun, this was a great video, I loved it. And I'm so happy you guys spent some time with me. So until next time, love you so much. Bye.